All right, it's weird. Thanks, Sean. Hey, everybody. You are here at the weekly chaos community meeting. It is July 9th, and um, I hope everybody had a great week off last week. I know I did. It was great doing absolutely nothing. It was amazing. I'm a big fan of that from time to time. Let me share my you did nothing and it was everything you thought it would be. It was. I celebrated. I re relished the nothingness. It was, yeah, it was pretty great. A plus recommend. Okay, let me make sure I got my chat window open here. For those who have not been at this meeting before, welcome. Um, this is, uh, just so you know, this is part of the Chaos Code of Conduct, so just keep that in mind as you're interacting with us here today. Of course, as always, you do not need to turn your camera on if you didn't see that uh, or get that already. Um, we don't care here. We're totally fine with whatever makes you happy. We want you to be happy. That makes us happy. And you're also welcome to just chat in the, in the chat window um, by text if you would like to do that instead of turning your mic on and all that. So yeah, if you have not answered the question, we would love to know what's the best way you like to learn something new. I always find this super interesting. People are very different in how they, they consume new information. So um, this is like an unofficial poll. I think it's really interesting. Yeah, trying to do the thing, yeah, learning from somebody. Mm -hmm. Love it. So it looks like, yeah, we uh, should continue to provide things in various formats because it uh, speaks to people differently. So, yay. Okay, let's jump into our agenda. Uh, we have a super light agenda since we were off last week. So if there is something that you want to add to the end, feel free to do so. Uh, we would love that. This is an open agenda. It's our community. So not just my agenda. <laughs> oh, July. Thank you. <laughs> thank you for fixing that. <laughs> Whoever just did that. I don't, I don't know, you know, I don't know. What I'd day. like to go. I'd like to go back a month and start over. <laughs> I feel like I'm still in June. Yes. Um, OK, so if you're not privy to this conversation, we are discussing what it would take to make chaos metric model an ISO standard. Um, it's a very, very long process, like one year plus. Uh, so we just are starting this discussion. We've had some um, informal discussions here and there, and we're actually now trying to kind of formalize it a little bit better so we can make some some uh, deliberate progress on this. If you would like to be part of that conversation, this is when the meeting is happening. You can do so. Next one is tomorrow, July 10th at 8 a.m. U.S. Central. And it is under Chatham House rule, which means it's not recorded. And if you um, do attend that meeting, you are uh, welcome to share information that was discussed. You just can't attribute it to a single person or, or any of the participants in that meeting. So um, it allows people the freedom to speak openly without the fear of it getting back to that, like tied to them in some way. So uh, if you do attend that meeting, you should know that that is a requirement to the, you're, you're um, agreeing to participate in that way. And we don't record these, again, to give a little bit more uh, freedom for people to speak openly about this. And we are doing this because some people are working at companies that uh, are pretty restrictive on the way they interact with open source communities. And so um, we're giving this a try. This is something new for chaos. So we're, we're um, this is kind of an experiment to hopefully alleviate that barrier for them to participate. So that's why we're doing it that way, if you're curious. But just to be clear, we're also still having ISO standard discussions in the metrics model meetings as well. So we're not removing them entirely from that. So we'll still have recorded meetings about the ISO standards work happening in the metrics model, working group meetings as well. So if you're that's interested in that topic, you can attend one or, or both of those meetings. That's a great distinction. Thanks, Don. Um, and, and maybe you can clarify this for me as well, too, Don. I, I kind of understood that the metrics model meeting will talk more about what is going to be contained inside the ISO standard, and then these ISO standard discussions um, separately are more about the process. Is that fair, or is it kind of talking about both things in both places? Or do you know? I had not heard that we were making that distinction. Okay. I also miss a lot of meetings and have been away a bit. 
Well, I might have just made that up in my I know head. someone said that in where Slack. I... Someone said that in Slack, but I, I hadn't heard that before. I don't know, okay. Sean. I I mean, I haven't heard that either. Okay. So but I've I've also been like on a smattering of those meetings in the last one I was at. I think I may have been the only person there or me and one other person. So I'm not sure. I guess show up tomorrow and find out the, <laughs> the thrilling answer to this question. This to be fair, I, I actually think we're still trying to figure out what the distinction is between those that's, two meetings. That's that's also completely valid since this is all kind of new for us and it's unfolding in the way that it is organically. So yes, attend if you would like, or if you can't attend that, um, you're welcome to attend the metrics model meeting, which will happen on this Thursday, I believe, is the next one. Um, they are both on the same calendar. So if you subscribe to the chaos metrics calendar, you will see that both meetings on your on your list. So um, yeah, here's the link if you need it. And again, you want to right click that and add that as a URL if you're using Google Calendar. Um, don't just click it. I think if you click it, I'm actually not sure I need to look into this a little bit more about Outlook because I don't I don't really understand how Outlook works when they're adding calendars in there, but um, it may be you can just click on that if you do have an Outlook calendar, but yeah. And if you just want to attend tomorrow's and you don't want to subscribe to the whole thing, you can just go here and then just add this one event to your calendar up here. Uh, who has questions about this? Anybody? I don't. Okay. If you do have questions after this meeting, you can pop into the metrics models Slack channel. Um, that's where this whole discussion is happening asynchronously. So if you want to join async, async, that's where you would do that. And that's where you can ask questions too. Okay. So the next thing on our agenda is, um, I don't think I've been super great about promoting our recent chaos cast. Uh, releases we we post them in slack and I put them in um, the weekly newsletter, but I should also mention them here because not everybody is everywhere, so if you have not listened to a chaos cast. Um, they're super interesting and you can pop them on and do other stuff. If you're able to multitask I am not one of those people, so when I listen to a podcast I have to just be like staring at the wall or something if I want to fully. Uh, yeah get into my head or, or be it, like riding in a car or something like that. So, um, <laughs> but if you would like to hear our discussion about the two years of Chaos Africa so far, it was a really fun podcast to record. Um, so feel free to listen to that. I think it's uh, maybe about 35, 40 minutes. So yeah, do that on your commute if you would like, or just- I just wanna, I wanna add something to that because um, this, I really loved, I know I've, I've told a few people this already, but I really loved this episode of the podcast. So, you know, it's, you know, celebrating two years of Chaos Cast Africa, which is fantastic. But what I really loved about this podcast was hearing everyone share their stories about how they first got involved in chaos and how many of them have taken what they've learned from chaos and taken that to participate in other communities based on what they've what they've learned about doing open source here. So I just I, I'm, I know I'm a little gushing fangirl here, but um, but I really liked that episode. I, I found it really, really interesting. I'm, I'm with you in the gushing fangirl department, Dawn, because I am too. Uh, we are so blessed to have such amazing contributors here coming from Africa. Um, and I, I really I well, of course, I love everyone who was on that podcast, but also I just love the, um, what's the right word? I don't even know, but the the camaraderie maybe across, and it was just a really fun podcast and a lot of joking around, um, a lot of friendships clearly been made in chaos, and that makes my heart happier than anything. <laughs> I love that. I love that so much when people are able to connect and make friends and feel like they're doing something meaningful, but also having a great time with it. Like I, That's my goal, so yay really happy. So have a listen. It's really fun. Um, yeah. Anybody have questions on that or anything about the podcast? I know Alice is also taking ideas uh, at I can write this in here. If you have an idea, 
or something you would oops, something you would like to hear on the podcast, you can email this um, email address and it will go to the chaos cast organizing team and we can maybe take action then from that. So any ideas you have, we would love to hear them. One, one other thing I want to mention is that uh, Harmony has volunteered to do some additional episodes about some of the stuff that's happening within, within Chaos Africa. So hopefully we'll have a few more podcasts coming from, from some of those folks because Harmony's agreed to, to help drive, drive some of those. So I think that's great. Yes, that's awesome. So, um, so kind of like a TBD on that, I think. So don't reach yeah. out to just yet, but it's TBD. But yes, that's in the works for sure. But reach out to that same email that Elizabeth just gave us for, for the podcast because uh, we can use those ideas regardless. Definitely. Okay, I'm going to actually bump this up here because um, I can do that. <laughs> so I'm going to do that uh, because I, I want to make sure we get to that. This was an additional um, conversation I wanted to open up with the community, but it's definitely not urgent. So I want to just make sure we have enough time and space to talk about this if we need it. Uh, I'm not sure who put this on the agenda, but if they would like to speak up. Yeah, um, I did. Okay, so um, hey everyone. So um, after the code of conduct team, that's myself and um, Mayor Blessing and um, also, um, Georg, after we went through the SAGE training for Code of Conduct, one thing that we did realize at the end of the day was like, um, while the Chaos Code of Conduct is great as it is, there are some of the things that we're missing out. And that was because we did do like a comparison with like other Code of Conduct to see what was missing. And we found out that first, we don't have like a procedure for making a Code of Conduct report. And at in-person events and also like through community chats and all of that, we also didn't have like um, a way to handle some of these incidences if they come up. And so we decided to um, take the examples from these communities and create these documents for the Chaos um, Code of Conduct as well. And um, I brought it here so we could walk through it together. We're looking for feedback from the community on how it is so far and um, areas that we can also improve on the documents. So I don't think I have access to these. Are you, are, are these, is this something you want to share with the community then, Anita? Yeah, let me do that right now. Okay. I also just want to say uh, that I'm so happy that this is being documented for the future. I think as our community grows, I think that just having these um, tools in place for us and these procedures in place already well thought out and um, documented will make life so much easier for all of us. <laughs> so thank you for doing that. I'm really happy we, we have this code of conduct team and you guys are doing great work. So thank you. Sorry. Give me a moment. No worries. Take your time. Our agenda is light today. <laughs> it is. <laughs> yeah, I am doing all of this from my phone, so it's a lot more difficult than it normally would be. If you need a hand, I, I can have both. That would be great. Thank you. <laughs> Just give me a few points. Did you say they're um, shared, Mary Blessing? Oh, no, just give me a few minutes, please. Yeah, I think the incident response um, is accessible now.
Awesome. Uh, and, uh, both of them are open up now. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Do you want to walk us through this? Yeah. Yeah, so um, the Code of Conduct Incident Response, right, is basically um, a guide that we need both as a community and also members of the Code of Conduct team. So in case an incident comes up, you are, you are at an event and um, you get involved in anything that you feel is against the Chaos Code of Conduct, um, how do we respond to that as a community? How do you report it as someone who feels like you are a victim of that particular incident or you are just an observer, a third party observer? How do you react to it? So basically that's what all of this is um, trying to detail from the areas that we come in and also how you can also describe the challenge or the problem as it is. So is this something, um, Anita, very blessing that the you're looking for feedback on or is this more of a here's what we're doing we need to post this somewhere i wanted to share with everybody um we're looking for feedback actually before we uh, proceed with um further steps okay i'm just going to take a minute here and let everybody digest And just to clarify, the people who will be using this document are the people on the code of conduct team, whoever that might be. Yes, um, for this particular um, document is going to be primarily for the code of conduct team, but it will be publicly available and accessible to everyone to just um, go over it. But the other documents, however, is for like um, anyone who wants to um, describe how the incident came about and all of that. Okay, perfect. I wonder if we should, um, wait, what is, what is, uh, maybe we can put, uh, am I allowed to put a comment on here? <laughs> I don't want to do that. Yes, so you can just comment. I'm not leaving, just so you all know, I'm not leaving. I'm not leaving, uh, I'm just putting this in here. Uh, <laughs> I have just seen that um, come up before where there was a person's name and something and they left and then um, they weren't sure who to go to after that. So I think this looks amazing. So much work went into this, you all. This looks great. It's extremely thorough and clear and um, I think it signals to our community that we take these things seriously and we have a clear, clear plan of action. I love it. I love it. Um, do people have questions for Anita or Mary Blessing on this? We can look at the other document in a second as well. I think 
you know, people also can take some time because it is pretty lengthy. So if, after this meeting, if this is something that you um, have strong feelings about and you want to provide some suggestions or comments, um, certainly free, feel free to do that. Um, Anita, do you all have a timeline in mind of when you want to publish this? So like when the comment period would be over? Um, for now, we're going to share it like in other meetings as well to get feedback as well on this document. So we don't have a time or date in mind yet. Okay. So if you eventually think of something, please feel, um, feel free to join in with the conversations. Awesome. Thank you. Um, I'm just going to put feedback welcome in case anybody's looking at this agenda after the fact. Um, let's look at this real quick since we have time. How to make a report. Very clear. Very clear. Yeah, this looks great. looks excellent. I think just a first pass at it looks great. Do people have um, comments on this one or questions for Anita or Mary Blessing on like, the process or anything about this? I don't. Yeah, this is excellent work. I love it. I'm so happy we went to those trainings with Sage. I'm just going to write in here what you said, Anita, about um, we'll circulate with a few other meetings before finalizing. Great. Okay. Um, yeah. Any other any other comments or anything anybody wants to talk about with this? No? Okay. No. <laughs> I guess we're good then. <laughs> Thanks, Anita. Merry blessing. Such thorough work. There's no there's nothing to be said. So you you covered all the bases. It's amazing. Thank you so much for that. Well, let's move on. If if people want to type something in chat, you're welcome to do that as well as we go. Um, I added this on our agenda here because I wanted to just resurface this. So this was an experiment that we had been trying to try and surface and highlight and recognize and acknowledge all those contributions that do not end up in GitHub already. Right. So these are things like community management, facilitating meetings, design work, project management, helping a newcomer, um, you know, all of all of those things that are going on all the time in chaos that never show up in, in GitHub. We started this file, for those who don't know, we have this file here that uh, we are kind of trying to um, keep track. So as someone would do something, they would submit a PR and add their contribution to this list. And then I would merge it in and they would be counted then. They would get a get credit on their GitHub. They would get a little green square, you know, in your participation chart. Um, but it's not, I, I, well, I obviously, I mean, it's been since May and you can see it kind of tapered off. Like we were good at the start and then it tapered off. Um, so I don't, obviously we're not catching things. Uh, there's a whole lot of work being done by folks that are not being, not being tracked or acknowledged. So uh, I just wanted to bring this up again uh, to see what the community thought about um, this format. If, if this is the thing that's not great, if it's that we just need to keep educating people and encouraging them to submit a PR and and self self identify that they've done some work, 
Um, if we need to maybe make it easier through some kind of Slack integration, if that's the barrier that is just kind of a pain to go back to GitHub and do that. Um, or like, where is the, where's the breakdown here in our, in our idea? Or maybe this is just a dumb idea altogether, which is totally fine. <laughs> I have no pride of authorship on this idea. It was just something that came to me. So I wanted to open it up to the community for feedback and ideas, if we have any. I like the idea. I haven't participated in noting these kinds of contributions for other people or myself for that matter. So I don't know if I don't think that's any thing about the system, though. I mean, I like I think having some way to do this is really important for people that uh, there are significant contributions to the community that happen in this way. How, how has the uptake been, Elizabeth? Have people been doing it or is it just a small number or yeah not really um we have a handful of folks who um have done it um uh, it's been a while since we kind of have surfaced this process again and so like we haven't been reminding people to do that um so we have two problems then it's a small group of people doing it and it's been a while since it's been done and I think anything like this, which is which involves a manual effort, so it doesn't automatically happen when you do the thing. I think those are just harder. I think, um, you know, maybe it would help if we reminded people in every meeting or just had what I do in some of the other working groups is I have a, like a reminders section, which is just like, don't forget the CFP is coming up. Maybe we need a little reminders section here. Don't forget to add yourself to the community contributions. And then we could also add like, you know, CFP reminders or reminders to, I don't know, whatever it is that we're trying, trying to do more of. Yeah. Don't forget to take credit. Don't forget to yeah. let us acknowledge you. Yeah. Mary Blessing. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to quickly say that um, the system itself is very okay. Uh, I think during my talk in Berlin, I did mention this system and a few people find found it really interesting and you know mentioned that oh it's something they can adapt in their own open source communities as well so i think it's just very okay um just like dan mentioned we need to do more reminders uh, remind people to to not forget to um you know take credits not forget to you know um selling the pr and maybe we can also encourage um, maintainers or leads of different working groups to also do that. Um, and yeah, you know, community managers as well. <laughs> myself, <laughs> talking to myself, um, so I like, encourage folks to like, um, not, not forget to do this. Do we think that uh, some kind of Slack integration would help? So like if someone, I don't even know if this exists, but if someone could just type a, a, a command in Slack and then it would maybe automatically do some kind of PR on their behalf. Is that something that can be done? Does anybody know? Anything can be done with uh, programming uh, interest. I think uh, it like might be easier. This, given that this document is freeform text, I don't know that yeah. we could we'd have to re-engineer the document i think yeah yeah i suspect you're right one fascinating thing we of uh, enabling people to have visibility is just to use the github co-authored by trailer that has really helped uh, for several kinds of contributions so it the lead person even the maintenance or any other person who is doing the commit or the pull request or whatever mechanism they are using. Just add the co-author by, and you put the people who contributed in those documents. They get all the credit. Yeah, that's good. It's actually co-authored by, not just authored by, co-authored. Yeah. to ask uh, Armstrong if um, when 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 they do that does it reflect on the um, the other people who also like helped work on that particular task 
Does it yes. reflect on their GitHub? Oh, yeah. Okay. So it appears because they co authored by, you go with the person's name and email address. So you can put multiple authors on that commit. Yeah, and it, it has to be their email address, you know, signed in together. The same GitHub, email. the same GitHub information that they have. Mm. Yeah, they need just to create a, 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 or have an existing GitHub address, just like when we are using this uh, sign off by. We just have it's a, a trailer that has uh, it's well uh, well known, and a couple of communities like Eclipse, OpenStack, uh, many others. Linux kernel is also using that quite enough. Okay, so it seems like we will keep. I think the community thinks you all think we can keep this process for now and just keep reminding folks to to do that. Do, uh, here's a question for you too. Do you feel like people feel weird self identifying contributions they've made or looking like to add their contributions? Is that is that something that people feel strangely or awkwardly about? Does anyone think that might be um, something happening. I think the general uh, record, uh, things that people have been coming is the process itself of making the pull request. Sometimes they are not comfortable with the process and not particular contributions. And that is why when you see, uh, come, have a reward harvesting and attributions, that is one of the reasons that Git and GitHub came up with such trailers because the process of doing the thing itself and the contribution are two separate things. Yeah. Yeah, that's a great point. I kind of saw it as an opportunity to get practice doing PRs, um, but you're right, Armstrong, if that's, uh, you know, the, if that's a barrier, then that might not be something that they want to figure out <laughs> like it's not worth it right like it's just not worth it to to add your name to the list so yeah well, and maybe maybe we could offer something up to people who don't who don't know how to do this yet because it's you know it's it's not something that's hard to learn but you do have to learn it right um maybe they can pop into the newcomer uh newcomer meeting as like a friendly place where someone can help them do their pull request yeah that's a good idea do you think we need, um, I don't want to add another meeting, but do you think we need a meeting for folks who are new to open source and just want to learn more about open source? Like regardless of chaos, just here's a meeting, pop in, we'll answer questions for you about open source. Um, personally, I, I do not think we do. I feel like our newcomers hangouts um, is like a good a good space to also answer questions around open source, you know, beyond chaos. And um, a lot of times, my one on one calls with newcomers um, during the tour guide, um, they, they usually are new to open source as well. So I, I try to also like talk to them about what open source is, you know, its benefits, and you know everything in between. So <laughs> having another meeting <laughs> on the calendar. Okay, yeah, Mary Blessing, I think you are already involved with the onboarding of newcomers, right? Yeah. Then that should be enough. Because sometimes, as we say, some people are more social people, some are more technical, and most often contributions can come in in different form or format. Yeah. It was courtesy to include those that contributed towards that artifact. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'm loving these ideas. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll keep at it then. We'll just keep going and keep reminding. So here's your reminder <laughs> for folks on this call who have done some work that did not show up anywhere. <laughs> Here you go. Uh, here's the place to go. Just submit your PR to this document. Add your, add yourself. Um, I want to do leave. I do. 
I can speak English. I do want to leave space for this update as well. So um, if there's no other comments on this process or um, how we do these contributions, then we can go on. But one last chance to add something. Lucy snoring as all is right with the world back here. <laughs> Okay, let's go ahead and move on then. Um, if we have time and there are more comments on this, we can come back sure, surely. Okay, I'm not sure who put this on here. I'm looking for Victoria. Do we know who put this on here and would like to speak about this? I do not. Oh, hi, I did. Hello, everyone. Oh. Oh, Toria. It's Victoria. <laughs> yeah, I was looking for you. I was like, I didn't see you. Okay, perfect. <laughs> Hello, everyone. I did. So I wanted to give updates on the meeting we had yesterday at the um, Chaos Africa um, Disability Inclusion Group. So we are yet to have a lot of people joining our meetings for now. It's still us, the um, people who were there before. We're employing people to join in. We do post um, reminders on our channel. If people have not joined the channel yet, we would appreciate if they do. So after our meeting yesterday, we got to realize that um, chaos in the, um, the Chaos Disability Inclusion Working Group will be working hand in hand with accessibility and every group in chaos um, needs or has a, a need for the implementation of accessibility, which is why I if, appreciate if everybody contributing to any project in accessibility can join in so that we can try to improve the accessibility in chaos. So for the feedback, we have a few feedback like um, the one from the research currently going on with the community we partnered with for the just concluded event, Accessibility Out um, Disability Outreach rather. So um, Lamy was on the call yesterday. She talked about how far she had gone with the research. She prepared a survey form that we can share to the community, right, where we include um, requesting their joining us in the testing of the websites like we are currently doing. So we we'll need the perspective of people who actually have these disabilities to know how they perceive and assess the chaos websites from the, the chaos main websites to the efforts to the badging website. And we also, um, Brian is supposed to reach out to Ruth or yourself to add the meeting to the calendar to remind people as well. I think, um, what else was it? yeah, we talked about um, six, um, writing down our six month goal for the rest of the year to know what action items we have to take, what we, we want to achieve. And one of the things we discussed yesterday was organizing a workshop because, um, like I mentioned er earlier, every group in chaos is going to be implementing accessibility one way or the other. And a lot of people um, might not be familiar with how to carry this out because um, we have some some pending um implementation of the audits from the accessibility team we've um we've made audits but they've not been implemented none of the i think just one has been implemented a lot of the accessibility audits on the code and the design that we that we reported has not been implemented yet so we want to, we are assuming is either people do not know about it or um, they are not familiar with how to implement it. So we suggested some sort of workshop for every working group from the design working group to the developers to the documentation. 
metrics and so on and talk about how to actually implement accessibility in these various sectors and how to kick it kick start it so that's it for now we are supposed to meet again in two weeks to review the other content of the goals we've written down and know how to um, arrange them quarterly or monthly as the case may be so that's the update so far Thank you very, very, very much. Thank you so much. I can also speak to this bit. Uh, so our website is built on WordPress. So to implement, I think there's some changes. I'm not actually sure where they ended up. Are they in the accessibility uh, repo? Or are they in the website repo as issues? Okay. They are. Uh they are both in the spreadsheets and as a repo i think okay. yeah the issue is to report here yeah. okay so i know i can speak to the changes that need to be made on the website design so because we're using wordpress we have a theme that we use uh, i don't know that i'm well versed enough in wordpress to make some of these changes I don't know about Kevin, we'll have to check with Kevin, but if there are folks in the accessibility working group that want to help implement those that know WordPress and know how to work their way around a theme, uh, like the code of the theme, that would be fantastic. Because I think that might be a big barrier to implementing changes. Because in WordPress, you can do, you can make some changes from the, uh, just the regular interface. Um, but some need a little bit more tweaking and like, um, you know, customized CSS files and things like that, which I am not the person to do that. I will break everything. That is a guarantee. I will break everything. So <laughs> it's worth saying too, that we've had this WordPress, uh, instance for quite a long time and it's gone through several owners. And so there, there's a lot of stuff in it that frankly, no one knows what it does. And when uh, Elizabeth has tried to disable it, everything everything breaks. So it's, uh, yes, it's a WordPress install, but it, it's a little bit brittle um, just because so many people have worked on it and it's gone through so many transitions over the years. And I, I think the most brittle part is that GitHub integration that uh, got built for us. That That's totally custom and a little bit black, black magic right there. Agreed. I have no idea how that works, but it just works magically. So I, I do love that bit of our website where that can we can pull bits and pieces from a repo somewhere. So um, I'm wondering, mm, I don't think that would work. I was just going to say, I'm wondering if the someone could write a customized CSS in GitHub and somehow we pull that in to WordPress, but I don't think that will work because it's more about content than design. So um this might be a deeper it is a deeper conversation that we should have with the website team which is right now myself and kevin lombard so <laughs> maybe we need to look at growing that team a little bit uh more as well so um yeah great i think um it will also be nice if someone who actually works on um website accessibility and specializes in CMS systems or content systems and knows how to tweak or improve accessibility in those systems, we can, I don't know if there's anyone in the team that can actually, I think this is where the workshop comes in, like let help out the team know how to tweak it so that even when they are not present, it can, it can be worked on. Yeah, I think that's a really great idea. Um, so hopefully that will help. Do you, you don't have a date for this workshop yet, right? Oh, no, it just just um, suggested yesterday. So that's just like feedback from the meeting. We don't have a date yet. We don't have a speaker yet. We have nothing planned, just an idea. OK, perfect. Um, and I will be happy to add this to the chaos calendar. It'll probably go under the Chaos Africa group of meetings. Would that be okay? Sure, that work. Okay. 
because we are at our limit of separate calendars. So um, we'll have to lump it with something. So I think that probably makes the most sense um, I, for now, I guess, since most of the folks are in Chaos Africa. We could also switch it to, we have a Chaos Operations meeting, which is like communications, things like that. Um, so we could maybe add it to that also, because it is kind of integral to the way chaos operates. So just think on it. We'll add it to Chaos Africa for now, and then if we need to switch it over, we totally can do that. Not a problem. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much for all that work. Uh, and we are actually at time, so one minute over. Thank you, everybody, for showing up and for participating today. And we will see you same place, same time next week. Good to see Have everyone. Good week, everybody. See you later. Bye. Bye.